What we're going to look at today is the diabetic foot infections and just really to acknowledge that it's more than the antimicrobial therapy. Um, it's around, it takes an MDT approach and it's assessing and treating peripheral vascular disease, which is really a key component. It's around caring for the wounds, offloading, addressing biomechanics, managing diabetes and treating um, contributing comorbidities, as well as exploring and mitigating patient barriers to care, which you're all very well aware of, because quite often when we get those um, POET cases through, one of the things is that people don't actually want to go into secondary services or into hospitals. So today we're going to have a, a little bit more closer look at the infections, reiterate the need for early referrals, see how important those annual foot screens are, and we're also going to keep an ear out for the hoofbeats of zebras. So key risk factors for diabetic foot <coughs> ulceration, that's what your screening's about. And the key risk factors are peripheral neuropathy and peripheral arterial disease. Also, if your patients and the people you're seeing coming through your door have had a prior ulceration or amputation, they're also at really high risk. Within 12 months, approximately 40% would have re-ulcerated. So again, they're the ones more likely to be presenting with diabetic foot infections. And if there's also the presence of deformity um, with neuropathy or peripheral arterial disease, it increases your risk of ulceration. So that brings me to our screening, foot screening, annual foot screens, just to a reminder of how important it is that you know um, the risk factors in the foot and also influences how you will manage um, the presenting diabetic foot infection as well. So a little bit about neuropathy. Um, Sevenfold increased risk of developing a foot ulcer, and I'm talking about foot ulcers because most diabetic foot infections um, present there will be a foot ulcer present. And also 90% of foot ulcers occur in people with neuropathy. But on top of that, peripheral arterial disease, the prevalence is reasonably high, but with diabetic foot ulcers, 50% of them roughly have, will have peripheral arterial disease as well. And there's also a relationship between peripheral neuropathy and peripheral arterial disease. People with um, neuropathy are more likely to um, develop peripheral arterial disease as well. I'm not, and the lifetime risk for somebody to, with diabetes to develop a foot ulcer is actually quite high. And foot ulcers precede 85% of amputations. And there's a really high mortality rate as well. And 40, it's quite broad here, but 40 to 80% of diabetic foot ulcers will become infected. And another reason that's really important to know the foot in front of you is what type of ulcer, what type of problems presenting because your neuropathic ulcer, and all these will be getting referrals through to your high-risk foot clinic, diabetes foot clinic at the hospital, so remembering referring. If you're getting ischemic ulceration presenting, that's gonna be going to your vascular team first and a referral there. But 50% from over new, overseas studies are actually a mixed etiology of neuropathic and ischemic, and also those ulcers have a really high propensity for infection. So that's why, again, knowing the foot that's in front of you is really, really important. So 20% of diabetic foot infections um, do result in amputation. So this is why it's important to get in um, early, diagnose those infections, the severity of infection, what tissues involved, and the vascular status of the foot so we can get the person on the right pathway quickly. Um, the International Working Group for the Diabetic Foot is um, every four years they release guidelines on the diabetic foot and also they do that in partnership with um, the vascular societies and the infectious disease society. So these are joint statements. And one of the, I think this is really important, if you've got somebody presenting with a foot ulcer, do palpate for those pulses. That's probably one of my take home um, messages here. So I think the um, International Working Group for the Diabetic Foot and the Infectious Disease Society, this is their um, classification from 2023. And it's really important to grade the infection that you've got presenting as well, because this is what, what are you going to do with it? Um, and 
we know that it's a um, clinical diagnosis based on the um, at least two local signs of infection, and I don't need to tell you those. You know, you know those, and it's um, it has prognostic implications as well. But once we're starting to look at um, grade two, the two symptoms and erythema less than two centimetres and probably oral antibiotics, but you'll be having a very high, um, uh, sorry, low tolerance for um, escalating that care to specialist services if it's not responding. We'll talk about that in a little bit more. What I do want to draw your attention to is when the wound presents, do remember to examine the wound because even a small wound without much inflammation that might be on a toe or over a joint, try probing that and seeing if it's probing to bone because that's a really accurate test for assessing if there's a likelihood of osteomyelitis and that immediately um, elevates the risk for that and the level of infection and you'll be seeking specialist advice on that. Um, I guess the clinical question is which antibiotic and what are you going to do? I'm not going to answer that um, question at all but just that there's large difference in practice even between infectious disease consultants on how to treat and manage diabetic foot. So if you're feeling a little bit lost and not sure what to do with that foot in front of you, um, I don't think you're alone in that. But do not treat clinically uninfected ulcers. I think this is where our stewardship comes in because we it's not going to um, improve healing, it's not going to prevent infections, and you're not going to get healing sooner by using antibiotics and uninfected ulcers. But I do think the, um, do have a look at the guidelines, but 12B in there, I think around administering the antibiotic therapy, and um, I think the length of time, the duration of antibiotic therapy, I don't know what common practice is currently, but at least a week and perhaps looking at um, two weeks as, as well. So I think that tolerance for um, hospitalisation as well uh, and thinking about it, but some of the characteristics that could suggest that it's a more serious um, diabetes related infection is again, what tissue, what's it penetrating to? Have a good look at that wound. Um, is it slough or is it actually tendon? you know, what's happening. And, and remembering toes and joints, they're pretty bony and, and there's not much soft tissue over them. Um, and as well that how extensive the erythema is and what's, what is happening around there. And the other thing that I always did in um, my clinic at when I was working at the hospital, was getting baseline bloods. I think they're really important as well. So if they do represent, you know what's happening. What's the white blood cell count doing? What's the CRP? Um, is it, it the foot responding to treatment as well? So the hospitalisation um, and thinking about when you're seeking specialist advice, because I think this is something that we really need to think about. So acute, this is from our health pathways. Um, acute hospital assessment, getting on the phone and talking to the vascular um, team or the um, general um, medical surge reg, whichever your pathway is, but cellulitis with an active diabetic foot ulceration. So if you're getting cellulitis in a foot that's already got um, an ulcer, you need to be uh, getting some advice and have a really low tolerance for um, ad admission as well. And I think thinking about that peripheral arterial disease, it's one of the um, risks for treatment failure because we know that people with diabetes one with neuropathy, they have um, their immune response is lower. And then with peripheral arterial disease, you've got more local tissue hypoxia, you've got ischemia to the limb as well. And so you're more likely to develop infections and, and less um, responsive to treatment as well. So really keeping, keeping those things in mind. So just to recap, mild to moderate diabetic foot infections, um, don't forget, if they've got an ulcer and it needs, refer it to your high-risk um, foot clinic, your diabetes clinic. With mild to moderate diabetic foot infections, have a low tolerance for hospitalisation. They, 
require close monitoring. Get them back in in a couple of days, two to three days to check. How are they responding? What's happening with that foot? Um, and also get a specialist opinion if they're not responding to treatment as well. And don't forget to palpate for pulses. So I think we've heard the um, saying, when you hear hoofbeats, think of horses. Well, I want you to think of French zebras, okay? So Charco, he was a French neurologist, and um, Charco foot's not that common, but it's very commonly missed. And it presents similar to your diabetic foot infection, red, hot, swollen foot, will always have neuropathy present, and it might or might not have pain. But the thing with, um, and it's commonly mistaken for infection, gout, sprain, deep vein thrombosis, and sometimes, um, keep in mind, osteomyelitis as well, but a delay in diagnosis and um, appropriate treatment can result in permanent disability. So get these referrals through quickly to your diabetes high-risk foot clinic because offloading is key here while it's in its acute phase. So I think I've just put this up here to remind you. This is on your health pathways. No new information here, but these are your numbers. They're there for when you want to pick up the phone and find out what to do. And also it's a reminder of what to request from where. So if you've got a spreading severe foot infection or even a mild one that's not responding, um, acute vascular surgery assessment and um, chronic or critical limb ischemia, um, vascular surgery assessment, Charco, as I said, across, and also um, the any ulceration through to your diabetic foot clinic and remembering that the e-referrals for your um, hospital clinics and your community podiatry is for the at-risk and um, high-risk foot, and that's through your PHO referral pathway. So in closing, um, foot screening is really important, can't reassure it enough. Diabetic foot infections are common, normally occur with a foot ulcer. Um, they need close monitoring, seek special advice, and early and rapid referrals save limbs and they save lives. And I think ask, ask for help. And it takes that MDT approach to um, look after those patients and also don't forget about our French zebras. So if you take anything away that, that from this, keep looking for Charco as well in your patients. So thank you, and if we've got time for questions.